What if consciousness is not just a byproduct of the universe, but the very force that brought it into existence? Could consciousness be the key to unlocking the mysteries of the universe? There are two great mysteries that have captivated the human imagination for thousands of years. The first is why the universe exists at all. Why is there something rather than nothing? In many ways, this primordial question has been raised by thinkers from every culture. Yet this ultimate mystery of existence is often eclipsed by another mystery, that conscious minds exist to perceive it and bear witness to the universe. While present in every waking moment of our lives, nothing is more mysterious than the fact that reality allows for conscious experience. Consciousness is the gateway to all value, meaning, and significance in the universe. Yet no scientific consensus has ever been reached about how and why we have it. An ancient idea is that the mystery of consciousness and the mystery of existence are intimately connected. Perhaps surprisingly, there are now growing numbers of philosophers and scientists who take this possibility very seriously. It is this potential connection between these two great mysteries that we will explore today. Regarding the mystery of existence, over the last century, Cosmologists have learned a great deal about the early universe by analyzing cosmic background radiation. Cosmologists peer deeply into the past, inferring the state of the universe in what is thought to be its first fractions of a second. But where did it all come from? What caused the universe? What happened before the Big Bang? The physicist Stephen Hawking cautioned that this is the wrong question. The beginning of the universe was itself the beginning of time. To ask what came before time is meaningless, like asking what is north of the North Pole. Yet, for many, this answer fails to satisfy. Why did the universe burst into existence? What shaped it to be the way it is? Physicists have proposed that the spark of existence originated in a quantum fluctuation, triggering an explosive chain reaction leading to the still-evolving universe we inhabit today. This narrative of existence, however, presupposes the laws of quantum mechanics. It leaves entirely unexplained why the primordial situation should be constrained by quantum physics. Here, we encounter the central problem that haunts the mystery of existence. Every time we propose the existence of a new initial state or cause, another one is required to explain that. Instead of explaining existence, we find ourselves simply adding more to what needs to be explained. The same presumably goes for consciousness. For those who claim consciousness to be fundamental to reality, there is the challenge of explaining how consciousness might avoid the same problem of infinite regress. Why does placing it at the foundation of nature not simply add yet more to what needs to be explained? In recent times, the possibility that consciousness is fundamental to reality has re-entered the academic conversation and gained new respect from philosophers and scientists alike. There are a number of reasons for this, but to summarize briefly, in recent decades, it has become ever more apparent that the materialist understanding of science seems entirely unequipped to explain how and why consciousness exists. That our consciousness, the most undeniable fact of reality, could so completely evade our scientific paradigm has been taken by some as a conspicuous sign that materialism, while fantastically useful, is not an exhaustive account of nature. What we have called consciousness may, in fact, represent a deeper part of reality than previously imagined, at least by most modern scientists. If you cannot explain consciousness in terms of the existing fundamentals, space, time, mass, and charge, then, as a matter of logic, you need to expand the list. The natural thing to do is to postulate consciousness itself as a fundamental building block of nature. Part of the motivation for this view comes from the fact that standard science provides only an external and behavioral account of reality. Its intrinsic nature, what reality is in itself, is left unaddressed by physics. Furthermore, the imminent reality of consciousness is the only intrinsic nature we know. In several respects, it seems to be an attractive candidate for also being the intrinsic interior nature of reality itself. But if consciousness is, in some way, fundamental to reality, 
How might this shed light on the mystery of existence? This question was explored by philosophers in the late 18th and early 19th centuries when a movement known as German idealism rose to prominence in Europe. As the movement progressed, a core group of thinkers argued for the absolute primacy of consciousness. Among other notable philosophers, Johann Gottlieb Fichte, Friedrich Wilhelm Joseph Schelling, and George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel urged that a deeper understanding of consciousness is necessary to understand why anything exists at all. It was Schelling who first drew a direct parallel between the absolute ground of existence and the essential structure of consciousness. Schelling theorized that existence must be self-grounding. What this means, essentially, is that the primordial basis of reality must somehow be the cause of its own existence to avoid the problem of infinite regress. An ultimate ground must be supposed, one for which self-existence is part of its intrinsic nature. What does this have to do with consciousness? Fichte, a mentor of Schelling, had previously argued that a unique feature of consciousness is that it does not appear grounded in anything beyond itself. The conscious self is self-producing in that it exists only in and for itself. As the contemporary philosopher Douglas Hofstadter has put it, it is almost as if this slippery phenomenon called self-consciousness lifted itself up by its own bootstraps, almost as if it made itself out of nothing. In a similar way, the philosopher Peter Sloterdijk described self-consciousness as, like a magical matryoshka, a Russian nesting doll, which also magically contains itself. It was precisely this quality that Schelling realized must be an attribute of the ultimate ground of existence. Furthermore, this was a quality found nowhere else but in consciousness. Today, centuries later, the philosopher Freya Matthews defends a position very similar to Schelling's. Matthews has pointed out that the self-causing principle behind existence must be reflexive, meaning that it directs back into itself. Any truly self-causing principle must be, in essence, about itself. And yet this property of aboutness, known to philosophers as intentionality, is another property found nowhere else but in consciousness. Something from nothing. Could anything ever really come from nothing? Perhaps the concept of a true nothing is simply an idea represented nowhere in reality. Perhaps, Instead of beginning with nothing, the challenge of explaining existence should focus on defining a self-existing ground where explanation can finally end. As we've already seen, physicists have proposed that the true ground floor of reality is the seething quantum realm of particles foaming in and out of existence. While this level of reality surely exists, there is no clear reason why the primordial situation should be constrained by quantum physics. A deeper level of explanation seems to be required. One possibility is that consciousness is the absolute ground of existence. While this would add yet another level of existence, it offers the benefit of actually posing an explanation for its self-grounding, self-existence. Quantum physics, as the ground of reality, calls out for explanation. Consciousness, in theory, can explain itself. If this is the case, we might wonder how such a necessary self-grounding consciousness could give rise to quantum physics and everything else. How could something as intangible as consciousness ground and connect with the laws of physics? Respected physicists have long defended, albeit controversially, that a connection exists between consciousness and quantum physics, notably in relation to observation. It seems that in all quantum experiments, the state of a system is always defined by the information that could be made available to observers. In quantum experiments, the choice to observe has the effect of defining the state of the system, which would otherwise present itself in a superposition of all possible states, producing very different experimental outcomes. While the interpretation of this strange finding is hotly debated, leading physicists, both past and present, have pointed to consciousness as playing a central role in quantum measurement. Is it possible that the universe exists through self-observation? Is the universe, as the physicist John Wheeler once called it, a self-excited circuit, in which consciousness gives meaning, and thus reality, to the world? In the past, arguments that consciousness is fundamental to reality have been dismissed because, in the physical world, 
There is simply no room for consciousness to play a role, no consciousness forces or mental particles have ever been discovered. But as the philosopher David Chalmers has pointed out, in the quantum world, this is no longer the case. And while a taboo surely exists around the subject in quantum physics, there nonetheless exists, a giant causal opening that is perfectly suited for consciousness to fill. A role for consciousness in quantum measurement, Chalmers points out, finally provides this fundamental property of consciousness with a fundamental role to play. It is worth keeping in mind that it remains a complete mystery what physical laws are actually describing, the intrinsic nature of the world. What reality is, in itself, is entirely unexplained by physics. It is therefore at least possible that physical laws, including quantum mechanics, are, in fact, rooted in consciousness. While the infamous claim that consciousness collapses the quantum wave function may be wrong, it is a possibility we cannot yet rule out. As we shall now explore, it is one which offers a unique account of existence as arriving, in a mysterious way, from its future origins. Another baffling discovery of quantum physics is that in the quantum world, future events can affect earlier events, time can effectively double back on itself. More broadly, this opens the striking possibility that the birth of the universe could have been caused by its future. This was an idea proposed by the physicist John Wheeler and later developed by the physicist Paul Davies. Wheeler pointed out that observation of a quantum system not only defines the state of the system in that moment but also defines its entire history. It is as though the act of measurement produces histories that are consistent with the present choice to observe. As Wheeler once famously remarked, we decide what the photon shall have done after it has already done it. In recent decades, this surprising fact of quantum physics has been demonstrated many times in laboratories. As Wheeler argued, there is no reason to doubt that this principle is true of the entire universe, that observations made now, or perhaps even in the distant future, stretch all the way back to the beginning of the universe, and thereby establish the necessary conditions in which observers can exist. If so, we, as observers, in a mysterious way, participate in the existence of the universe. Along these lines, Davies has also argued that it is at least plausible that the long-term evolution of consciousness will one day pervade the entire universe, that through the spreading and development of conscious minds, perhaps over billions of years, the universe is destined to eventually realize its total mental potential. In a resulting cosmic omega point, the entire universe finally becomes fully self-observed, thereby satisfying the conditions of its own existence and retroactively creating itself. Part of the weirdness of quantum physics is that observations made now can affect the nature of reality as it was in the past. In the same way, observations made in the very far future, maybe a trillion years hence, can affect the nature of reality today and back at the Big Bang. So if you accept this quantum physics model and assume a universe saturated by mind or by observers, then indeed, the whole character of the universe, including the emergence of its laws and the nature of its states, becomes inextricably intertwined with its mentality, with its mindfulness. Davies admits that this is a highly speculative idea, but it is nonetheless consistent with what we know about quantum mechanics, and not an idea we can yet rule out. Existence from Value Another possible connection between consciousness and the mystery of existence lies in the relationship between consciousness and value. Philip Goff is among the recent wave of philosophers defending the fundamentality of consciousness. Goff has also suggested that the animating force of reality may be mysteriously connected to its value. Goff reminds us of an insight first made by the philosopher David Hume in the 19th century. Hume observed that we simply do not perceive causes in nature. While we perceive a flow of events, our apparent perception of causes is an illusion. Similarly, science does not actually reveal causes in the world. Goff points out that once we truly recognize this, we are free to consider an alternative possibility, that the natural necessity, the animating force of existence, is not material or mechanical, but in fact, follows from its value. Goff considers that such a view might also help explain why, against all odds, 
The universe seems finely tuned to allow for what he calls, a universe of great value, in which conscious, value-sensitive beings can evolve. In the last century, cosmologists have learned that slightly changing any number of precise values in the laws of physics has the immediate effect of obliterating all possibility of life. Among all the intelligible arrangements of nature's laws, the probability of a life-friendly universe is, in fact, trillions to one. This provocative discovery has led to the proposal by some of a multiverse, trillions of other universes, the existence of which can nullify the apparent specialness of the universe. But as Goff and others have argued, fine-tuning may actually be an indicator of the deeper significance and necessity of consciousness on the metaphysical landscape. The philosopher John Leslie explored this possibility in his 1979 book Value and Existence, where he argued that because of the problem of infinite regress, no physical mechanism will ever be adequate to explain the universe's existence. To solve this mystery, we must go beyond materialism and consider that something very different, more akin to value, is the animating force of reality. If so, a universe capable of supporting value-sensitive conscious minds might have been a metaphysical necessity. Is it possible, as the 20th century philosopher Alfred North Whitehead believed, that, existence itself is the upholding of value intensity? The view that value is the animating force of existence is a perspective with deep philosophical roots, both in Western and Eastern systems of thought. Plato, in particular, believed that the animating first cause of existence was its goodness. For Plato, existence itself held intrinsic value over non-existence, and this latent value was the generative force of reality. While the human understanding of the universe has progressed a long way since the time of Plato, there are nonetheless philosophers today who argue that Plato was essentially correct, that the underlying nature of the universe is more mind-like than classically physical, and that the true creative force of this reality is its value. Consciousness is the vehicle of all value, meaning, and significance in the universe. To put it bluntly, without consciousness, nothing matters. Thanks for joining me on this journey into the mysteries of consciousness and existence. I'd love to hear your thoughts, what do you think about the possibility that consciousness plays a fundamental role in the universe? Let's continue the conversation in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to support more content like this. Until next time, take care and keep questioning the nature of reality.